Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and thank you for tuning in into this follow-up video. A few months back, I explained why pilots dump fuel and here we'll discuss how and where do pilots dump fuel. There are many mysteries about fuel dumping within the general public and I want to clarify a few of them. What happens to the dump fuel and what procedures need to be followed to do so? Let's get started and dump some fuel. Delta 2235, connect departure 125.9er. 259 er at Delta 2235. Today's video is brought to you by Captain Joe's Fan Shop. Stand out as an aviator in one of our great t-shirt designs. Click the link in the description box to get yours today. Happy shopping! If you aren't familiar why pilots dump fuel in the first place, please watch my other video on fuel dumping. As discussed in that video, the primary reason why pilots dump fuel is to lower the overall weight of their aircraft to not be over the maximum landing weight. Now, a lot of people have the impression that pilots choose a random place to do so. That's not entirely true though, and I'll show you with an example later. Now, to best show you how pilots and air traffic controllers work hand in hand, during this procedure, we'll use a real-life scenario which happened a few years back on a United Airlines flight departing from Newark. Thanks. United 89, heavy contact, your departure, good day. 89, first time departure, good day. Everything seems normal, but a few minutes after departure, the Boeing 777 was struggling with some landing gear issues, but hear for yourself. Okay, thank you, uh, United 89 Heavy. Uh, we actually have a, uh, a noise problem, and we think on the landing gear, so uh, we, uh, we're we not going to want to go too much higher, about 18,000 for now, and um, so we can figure out what we're doing. Okay, no worries, you want to level off before you even get up there? We would like to level off from United 89 Heavy. United 89 Heavy, at altitude and the by Okay, one five fifteen thousand and eighty nine heavy. So the pilots aren't yet a hundred percent sure what the problem is, but a loud noise coming from the landing gear could potentially mean that the landing gear or the landing gear doors didn't fully close, causing unwanted drag, resulting in higher fuel burn and therefore endangering in reaching the destination. Yeah, you're dating now. Just let me know if uh, you need to return or um, whatever the issue may be. But for now, I'll just continue in my answer. Yeah, uh, thank you. We'll work on the problem. We'll let you know as soon as possible. Right now, one five thousand two fifty knots. Uh, we'll do it. Thank you, United Airlines. The pilots and air traffic controller responses are relatively calm, as this is a controllable situation. The plane's flying. They have tons of fuel on board, and therefore time. If the air traffic controller immediately offers his help, the pilot kindly accepts but needs to evaluate the situation first. The pilot uses good airmanship and reduces his speed to 250 knots. United 89 Heavy, you can turn right heading 280 and you'll be able to stay on that heading for uh, the next 40 miles if you need it. Okay, appreciate it. A right turn 280 for United 89 Heavy. So as the pilots are focused on reading the necessary checklist to determine and solve the failure, the air traffic controller takes care of the navigation part and gives them radar vectors, which is a big relief for the pilots. And approximately 10 minutes after the call that something is not right with the plane, the pilots have made their decision to return back to Newark and more importantly, request to dump some fuel. Yeah, it looks like uh, we're going to go back to Newark. Uh, we need to dump some fuel, so if you can uh, slowly to, uh, bring us to an area where we can uh, dump fuel, uh, we'll appreciate it. Now, the air traffic controller has to quickly determine where it would be safe for the pilots to dump fuel so that there is no traffic flying anywhere near the fuel dump area, and therefore she asks this question. Yes, sir. What else do you, would you like to uh, go to dump fuel? Uh, this algebra you will do good, uh, 15,000. Okay. Stand by one and I'll coordinate something. Watch it in. Do you have any idea how long you'll need to dump fuel? Uh, I'm still working on the, uh, on the uh, performance data, but uh, at least a half an hour. At least a half an hour. Okay, just a general idea. So at least half an hour. Okay. Very well. Stand by. And United 89 Heavy, just to clarify, you're not declaring an emergency. You just need to return to have the issue looked at, correct? That's correct. There's no emergency. We just need to go to an area to dump some fuel and, uh, and go back to the That is correct. 
Now, I have to admit, this is a little unusual because 90% of the time when pilots have to dump fuel is due to a previous or ongoing emergency situation like an engine failure, a flight control failure, medical emergency, or in this case, landing gear failure. So I can't judge the situation as to why the pilots didn't declare an emergency, but see what happens next. And that bomb, United Indian and Everest, we still run it through some checklists, so we will advise when we start to dumping the fuel. Okay, very well. She will give them now vectors to stay within her airspace and later holding instructions to hold over Bridgeport VOR. And uh, United 89 Heavy uh, left turn heading 150, 150 on the heading. And we'll get you going towards Bridgeport VOR. It'll be Bravo Delta Romeo and I'll give you holding instructions over Bridgeport. Uh, 140 heading, 140 on the heading, left turn. 140 and uh, when able direct Bridgeport, yeah, United 89 Heavy. We're ready to copy holding instructions at Brewer Bridgeport for United 89. United 89 Heavy, uh, proceed direct to the Bridgeport VOR. Bravo, Delta, Romeo. Hold west northwest of Bridgeport on the 2 9 0 radial. Left hand turn, one and a half minute leg. Okay, hold northwest 2 9 0 radial, left turn. Can we have 10 mile left turn? Uh, yeah, sure, 10 miles. You can. 10 miles is fine. Interesting to see is that the pilot requested 10 miles holding legs, which is double the length of what she offered, probably as the pilot was a little worried to fly through his own fuel vapor. Now, next call is of the pilots entering the hold over Bridgeport at speed 210 knots. Boston, United 89 Heavy, uh, entering the hold at Bridgeport at 50,000 at this time, speed 210. United 89 Heavy, thank you. I'll bridge port altimeter 2992. 2 thank you. And uh, fuel dumping is uh, right now commencing for United 89 Heavy. Thank you very much. The fuel dumping has now been commenced and the pilots are in a relatively comfortable position. The plane is flying within the holding and dumping fuel whilst the air traffic controller takes care of no other plane flying through or anywhere near the dumping area. And the next call of the ATC controller is mandatory. Now listen up. Attention all aircraft, fuel dumping in progress over the Bridgeport VOR uh, at 15,000 by a Boeing 777 West Northwest. So now all aircraft in the vicinity are informed and aware of the ongoing fuel dump. The pilots now have established themselves fully into the Bridgeport holding and have time to recheck their checklist and prepare for the approach into Newark. And in the meantime, the fuel is being dumped at a rate of one to two tons per minute, depending on aircraft type. United 89 Heavy, I was just advised that uh, your company has uh, declared an emergency for you, so we'll need to get the uh, souls on board when you have time. This is actually very rare. The company has now declared an emergency for the pilots. I assume the pilots established contact with the maintenance crew on ground as they were going through the checklist and the company didn't want to take any risks and contacted ATC and declared the emergency for them. Therefore, the ATC controller has to ask for the souls on board question. Souls on board are 268 souls on board. Fuel remaining after uh, dump will be approximately uh, six hours flight time. Thank you very much for the information. Again, good airmanship by the pilot, letting ATC know how much remaining flight time he'll have after the fuel dump and when fuel dumping is finished, so that she can then prepare to vector them onto the approach of Newark. Uh, United 89 Heavy will be continuing dumping fuel for another 13, one, uh, three minutes. Okay, so you'll be finished uh, in about 13 minutes. Affirmative, and then we'll come back to, back to New York, uh, New York, uh, to do that. Okay, very well, United 89, uh, I'll, uh, I'll get you back to New York when you're finished. Thank you. Yes, sir. And after exiting the hold, the plane was vectored onto the ILS approach and performed a normal landing with emergency vehicles standing by next to the runway. Now this was definitely one of the easier ones as there is no imminent threat to the aircraft such as an engine fire or similar nature. Now keep in mind, if an engine fire or fire on board is indistinguishable, pilots will neglect the fuel dump and perform a so-called overweight landing 
due to the severity of the emergency. That's a whole nother video right there. And yes, in case of an engine fire, planes are built in a way that they can dump fuel regardless of the fire. Now this short little clip here shows a British Airways 777 needing to dump some fuel over Ireland, but their request is initially rejected by ATC. Listen for yourself. Two one five three Shannon, Roger. That is all approved. You are cleared. Uh, presentation direct to Shannon. Uh, cleared presentation direct to Shannon. Stephen two one five three Shannon. Uh, Shannon, 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 Shannon,
more than 700 tons of fuel were dumped over various parts in Germany. And I have to add, that's peanuts. The DFS, the German Flight Safety, recorded more than 3.2 million commercial flights in the same year. 21 fuel dumps don't sound so bad anymore, do they? But reason enough for the guys who believe in chemtrails. <laughs> but the big question is, is it harmful to the environment? Yes, because you are polluting the air with uncombusted kerosene drops. There has been one significant incident a few years back as some fuel drops reached the ground over Memphis, Tennessee, and farmers reported tiny dots burned onto leaves of all types of plants varying in color depending on the plant. A big airline based in Memphis admitted a few weeks later to have dumped more than 10,000 pounds of jet fuel at low level onto the farmland to reduce their overall weight. So yes, it is harmful to the environment. But please accept the ruined plants were an exception as this happened at very low level. Now many studies have shown that the fuel immediately evaporates as it is highly volatile. In a cubic meter of air, only 0.1 grams of kerosene, comparable to two drops of water, could be found trailing 100 to 1,000 meters behind a fuel dumping plane. So as analysis have shown, the effect of evaporated fuel vapors in the atmosphere is negligible. So from an environmental standpoint, we have far much bigger problems on our planet Fuel dumping is the least of our worries. So don't worry, the next time you're on a plane and you see this, this is just air condensating over the wings. Or this picture here is the same thing. It's physics, that's all it is. Now the rumor that pilots dump fuel prior to landing to lower their weight because airports charge them for the weight of the aircraft is complete nonsense. Don't believe that, please. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. Follow my Instagram account. Check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always landing wishing you all the best. Go on.